and welcome to a tutorial over mole mass conversions. For today's tutorial, you want to have out your notes, a calculator, and a periodic table. So make sure to have those out before we begin. So mole mass conversions include the addition of a new conversion factor. This new conversion factor is that one mole also equals the molar mass of a substance in grams. Okay, so what exactly does that mean? And where do I find that molar mass in grams? My answer for you is on the periodic table. That's where you find the amount of grams of something. So looking at our table, for phosphorus, I find phosphorus on the periodic table, and it shows me that the molar mass in grams is 30.974 grams per mole. And I can just do this for every element I'm looking up. So aluminum as well is going to be 26.982 grams per mole. So for every element, it's very easy to find. You can find helium and silver on your own. Okay, the number of particles are always going to be the same. In one mole, the number of particles is always 6 point zero two times ten to the twenty third. This is Avogadro's number that you should have read about previously. And the number of moles, it is always going to be equal to one mole. Okay, so now knowing that one mole is equal to this amount in grams for a substance, we can use it in our problems as a new conversion factor. Here's an example. How many grams of silicon are in five moles of silicon? So as usual, we're going to use dimensional analysis to solve this. The five moles of silicon are my given, so I'm going to start my problem with five moles of silicon. Because I've started with moles, I know moles have to go on the bottom of my dimensional analysis. Since I'm solving for grams, it's going to go on top. So how do I know what numbers are filled in there? Well, using my periodic table, I find that the molar mass of silicon is 28.086 grams. And as usual, this is equal to one mole. I put this in my calculator, rounding to two significant figures, as I'm supposed to. I get 140 grams of silicon. Let's try another. How many moles of potassium are in 136.9 grams of potassium? This is my given, and my unknown is how many moles. So, I'm going to start with 136.9 grams of potassium. So, now this time, grams have to be on the bottom and moles have to go on top because I want my units of grams to cancel. Looking up potassium on the periodic table of elements, I find that in one mole of potassium, I have 39.098 grams. Putting this in my calculator and rounding to four sig figs this time, I end up with a final answer of 3.501 moles of potassium. Again, box your final answer so you can tell your teacher what your final answer is. Try number three on your own. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you had success with number three. Let's double check. Your given was 0.45 moles of argon. Okay, so if I started with moles, moles have to go on the bottom. Since I'm solving for grams, grams go on the top. For every one mole, looking up on my periodic table, I have 39.948 grams of argon. Moles cancel. And I end up with a final answer of 18 grams of argon. So again, we're just using molar mass as a conversion factor to get us from grams to moles or moles to grams. Okay, so more on molar mass. It says, but what if we have a compound? Because the molar mass of an element is so easy to find, you just look it up on the periodic table. If we have a compound, you have to add the molar masses of all the elements in the compound together to get the molar mass 
for the entire compound. If the formula contains subscripts, you need to count that element the same number of times as the subscript. For example, in H2O, you would count hydrogen twice and oxygen once. So the example on here I'm actually going to do is for ammonia. So NH3 is ammonia. So what I need to do is consider nitrogen and hydrogen. There's one nitrogen, so I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.007 grams. And then I have three hydrogens. So I'm going to multiply that by the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 grams. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to add these together to get a grand total for ammonia. Okay, so I end up getting 17.031 grams per mole for the entire compound of ammonia. We're not just looking at one element this time. We're looking at an entire compound. So let's try this for D. It's a little bit harder because we have parentheses. D is calcium hydroxide, and you should know how to name that by now. So in calcium, hydroxide, I have one calcium, I have two oxygens, and I have two hydrogens as well. Well, how did I know that? Okay, this little two is distributed to not only the oxygen but the hydrogen as well. So I'm going to multiply these numbers by their molar masses. So calcium has a molar mass of 40.078 grams. Oxygen has a molar mass of 15.999 grams. And hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.008 grams. So you'll get to use a periodic table on your test for this, and it makes this very easy to do. I add them all together, and I get a grand total of a molar mass of 74.092 grams per mole for the whole compound of calcium hydroxide. I can then use these numbers in mole conversion problems that include compounds. So let's try this. Okay. My first one reads, how many grams of ammonia are in 25 moles of ammonia? So my given is the 25 moles of ammonia, and I want to convert to grams. So I know that moles need to be on the bottom and grams need to be on top. But what numbers go in there? Well, on the previous page, we just found out that one mole of ammonia equaled 17.031 grams. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to plug it in and use it as a conversion factor. For every one mole, I have 17.031 grams. Okay, moles cancel as they should, and in my calculator, I find out this is equal to 426 grams of ammonia. I'm going to skip sample problem two. You can look in the key on your notes if you want to see how that one's done, or you can try it on your own and then check it with the key. I'm going to do number three. Number three says how many grams, so we're looking for grams, of calcium hydroxide are in 0.45 moles of calcium hydroxide. So I'm going to start with 0 0.45 moles of calcium hydroxide. So remember, this is Ca in parentheses, OH, close your parentheses, 2. You do have to remember your nomenclature to know what calcium hydroxide is. If I start with moles, I want moles on the bottom. And I'm solving for grams, so I want grams on the top. On the previous page, we discovered that one mole of calcium hydroxide was equal to 74.092 grams. So I'm going to use that and plug it in. For every one mole, I have 74.092 grams. Using my calculator, I find out that this is equal to 33 grams of calcium hydroxide. That is my final answer. So I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. For any additional help, please visit our website and the key. Have a good evening.